This video is on weld certification process, so the process to set up a weld certification at a company. So you're, you're a company, you go to a customer, they say, we need your welding certifications. You say, we don't have any. They say, well, you need to get them. So this is how to get welding certifications to set up at your company is what we're going over here in this video. So the first thing, usually when you need to get welding certifications that you don't have, it's because a customer requires them. You, you're going to produce a part, you send it to, to the uh, customer, and they say, we need welding procedures for these. And you go, oh my, we don't have any. The customer is usually the person that uh, makes you have to get certified, okay? So the first thing you need to do is figure out what code you're going to do your certifications to, right? So there's a couple different ways to do that. The first and easiest way, if you're lucky, you call the customer and you say, what code? And they say, AWSD 1.1 Structural Steel or ASME Section 9 or, or whatever the code is. They know it. A lot of times that doesn't happen. They don't know the code they need. So if you run into the situation where the customer doesn't know, you got to move down here into the application of what you're doing. You have to figure out the code that you need to do your welding certifications to. All right. And the way you do that, I would first start with um, material. If you know you're welding steel, that's easy, right? Right there, steel. All right. And I'm using the AWS D1.1 structural steel welding code as an example. We're going to do kind of a mock-up of how, of how you would become certified, and that's the code we're going to use in our mock-up, I guess. Um, service area, so structural steel, that's a service area, right? If you're welding an airplane, you need to find an airplane type code, right? If you're doing something with pressure that it's inside like a pipe, you need to have like a pressure type code, all right? So it's, it's the, uh, the service area is what I'm getting at. Where's it going once it's done, right? So uh, oh, governing body, that's another uh, important uh, thing. Uh, governing body would be like, and I call it governing body, which, you know, is political, but it's AWS, American Welding Society, is governing this code. It's the governing body of this code, right? If you're doing ASME, you know, that's the governing body, or API. Or, so you got to figure out the governing body that you want your welders to be certified to, and a lot of times that deals with, again, your uh, service area. So like with AWS D1.1 structural steel, it's gonna be a steel material, the service area is structural, so it's holding something up, right? So that's why you would use this code. And then the governing body is the AWS. And I would always ask your customer before you get going into this, are you okay with this code book um, that you're using to certify your welders to? Because the certification process is extremely expensive. So you don't wanna do it to the wrong code, right? So um, the first thing you gotta figure out, code, right? Ask your customer, if they don't know, go down to what the application is. If it's holding something up, structural. Material, steel. You're not going to want to go to structural aluminum if you're doing steel, right? So the material is important. Again, service area, structural, and then the governing body is going to be, you know, the AWS. Who wrote the code, right? Once you get the code figured out, so I got the D1.1 right here. So we figured out that we want this code book right here. What are you going to do next? You're going to go see your welders, people that are producing the part, right? So go down here to see welders. The first thing you're going to ask them is what position are you uh, doing the welding in? Or is it flat, horizontal? What's the deal? So as our, for our mock-up certification, I'm going to say that they are doing uh, both fillets and grooves, all right? And the groove is in 2G. So we're going to go horizontal um, groove, 2G. But they're also doing flat fillets and horizontal fillets, okay? And the reason that that's not going to be as, as important, we'll, we'll show you here in a minute, because usually when you do groove certifications, it pre-certifies the fillets, all right? So we're going to, let's just write that down. So 1F and 2F as well. So that's flat fillet, horizontal fillet, and you're doing horizontal grooves in this mock part, okay? Thickness range. Let's go down here to thickness range, or up to thickness range. Um, you got to figure out the thickness of the material that you're doing. So for this, let's just say you're doing quarter inch steel. So let's go 0.25. So what happens is it, it comes in a range. So if you certify on 0.25, there's a range that you're certified to. So let's say you're also welding eighth of an inch uh, material as well on the part. So you're doing quarter inch and eighth of an inch. You got to determine if the thickness range on whatever you're doing your test on is going to qualify you for those thicknesses, those positions, right? So let's roll down to the bottom. So you've got the thickness range of what you're doing. You're welding eighth inch and quarter inch steel. 
the groove fillet, you're doing flat fillets, horizontal fillets, and horizontal grooves. Now you got to figure out what the test is that you're going to certify the welders to, because there's going to be some kind of test, a bend test, a uh, macro etch, something. So you got to figure out the test next. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open up the actual code and we're going to go to the positions and the thickness ranges in the code and determine what test we need to do to certify welders to do 8th inch steel, quarter inch steel in the 1F, 2F, and 2G positions for an imaginary part, if that makes sense. So let's move to the code. We'll look at position first, then we'll go to um, thickness ranges and uh, go from there. So we're looking at the actual table in the D1.1 for positions and you can see complete, complete joint penetration groove welds right here and we're talking 2G right? I like that. So that's 2G. If you certify in the 2G position it certifies you for complete joint penetration groove and flat horizontal partial joint penetration groove flat and horizontal and then here's the one we need, fill it, flat and horizontal. So what we're in our mock certification, we need 2G, we need flat and horizontal fillets, that's going to work. So we need to do it in the 2G position, so horizontal groove position, and that will give us the three positions that we need. So that's the next thing you got to figure out, what position you're doing the testing in. 2G will give you 2G as well as flat and horizontal. So we're all set. We're going to do a 2G groove joint. All right, so we know we got the positions right for our mock uh, certification. Now we got to make sure the thicknesses are correct, right? That was the second thing that I had on the board. T means the testing plate, all right, that you do has got to be greater than or equal to eighth of an inch, less than or equal to the three eighths. That's your quarter inch, all right? So we're gonna do it on quarter inch. And the testing that you're gonna to have to do is two tensile poles, two root bends, two face bends, and then your thickness that you're qualified in right here is gonna be a minimum of eighth inch to two times what you tested on. So it, your, your um, thickness range is gonna be eighth of an inch to half inch, because we're doing it on quarter inch. Quarter inch times two is half inch. So your thickness range that your welders are going to be certified to are going to be eighth of an inch to half of an inch. What we were actually welding in our mock part required eighth and quarter. So you're within that range. So you're all set to go to testing in the 2G position. Now that we know the code we're using, the thickness, the materials, the positions, all that stuff in our mock uh, certification, you're going to move to do the, to do the process of certification. And the person that's going to do that is a certified welding inspector. Most companies don't have a CWI on their payroll. You have to farm that out, and it can be very expensive. If you do have a CWI, the CWI is going to figure out all the stuff we just figured out in our mock uh, setup here. So you're lucky if you have a CWI on the payroll. But um, the certified welding inspector is the person that's going to write these procedures and do the certification, all right? Commonly referred to as a CWI. First thing they're going to do is write a welding procedure specification. There's one of these, all right? The welding procedure specification is going to have all the variables for the welding process, so like machine settings, anything that has to do with that weld is going to be on this welding procedure specification. All right, this is the document that you give to the welders to get certified, all right? But before you can do that, you have to do a procedure qualification record, commonly referred to as a PQR. That's the testing that we just looked up. That's your two tensile poles, your two face bends, your two root bends. When those tests pass, that certifies the WPS is good to go to hand out to welders, all right? So until you, until you do the PQR, the WPS is useless, all right? There's one of those, all right? Once you get the PQR done that says the, the specifications on the WPS are good, you can move into your welder qualification test records. The welder that does the PQR is now certified because they did all this testing, so they're certified. So, but you still have to write up a welder qualification test record or a WQTR. This is the welding certification for the welder, all right? I got a question mark written right here because for however many welders are producing that part, that's how many welder qualification test records you have. So you're producing a part, you have 10 welders welding that part, 
This question mark goes to a 10. You gotta do 10 of these. You have to do one of these for every welder that is welding on that part, all right? So let's go back to our, uh, our actual mock setup here. Quarter of an inch horizontal grooves. So that's the position they're doing. They're gonna do the two tensiles, the two phases, the two roots for the PQR. When the welder qual qualification test record comes, there's, there tends to be less testing you have to do for each welder after that because you did a huge amount of testing here, so they're usually just gonna do two faces or two roots, or it depends on the coat, but it's less testing usually on a welder qualification test record once the PQR is done, all right? So we're gonna move over here to the qualifications. So after at the end of the day, what are you now certified to uh, after you did all that, all right? Your qualifications are eighth inch to half inch thick steel in the structural applica application, all right? 1F, 2F, 1G, 2G, and I forgot to mention that when I was filming the book, but it also certifies you to 1G, even though we didn't need that, right? Our mock setup was we were doing a flat fillet, horizontal fillet, and then a horizontal groove, but you are certified to 1G as well, which can help you if you are doing something else in the same company that requires 1G, I guess, that makes if that makes sense. So this is your qualifications now, eighth to half, 1F, 2F, 1G, 2G, Positions. Now, if you switch to some other application that's not structural, that's not steel, uh, let's say you're welding uh, three quarter inch steel, you gotta get a whole new set of procedures, all right? So this can get real real hairy real quick. So um, hopefully that gives you a quick overview of how you become certified. It's not a real easy process and uh, you know, you really have to have people that know welding to do this. You can't, uh, you know, mechanical engineers and people like that try to do it. and they don't know welding well enough to get this done. You really need a welding engineer and you, you for sure need a certified welding inspector. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of how the certification process works from uh, we need to get certified, where do we start, all right, to the finished product of this is where we're qualified and uh, we're gonna produce this part now. So that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Weld and we'll see you next time.